there, this is Michelle Holland. I'm the creative director of uh, Synergy IQ. As a leader in an organization, we take on a lot of, uh, a lot of emotion in the role. And we absorb other people's emotions and uh, you know, that this can cause conflicts. Conflicts with our own values, conflicts with our own thoughts, conflicts with our people. The interesting thing I find is when I'm working with leaders is um, one of the things that uh, they get feedback on is the way in which they engage with their people. And uh, many leaders that I work with, they, they struggle because they start um, doing this whole, pen, what I call the pendulum swing, is they'll go into you know tough manager one day and then soft and sappy manager the next day. And what they're trying to do is counterbalance uh, what they believe to be uh, inappropriate or ineffective behavior. The motivation is coming from a good place. Unfortunately, the delivery misses the mark and conflict can be created. So the best um, leaders that I've come across have a beautiful balance of being able, of being able to be compassionate to their people, so understand and empathy, and they hold them accountable. So this is where it doesn't need to be, you don't need to be a tough ass to hold people accountable, and you don't need to be a softy to be compassionate and empathetic with your people. Empathy is about seeing and being with someone from their point of view. It's not about being nice, you know, being a great leader, uh, nice is not a word that I would use to describe them. Being a great leader means that you are getting effective outcomes from your people and from yourself and from your organization. That's what being a great leader is all about. As a leader, it's not your job to make your people happy. It's not your job to motivate your people. It's not your job to make all of your people engaged. But what is your job is to create the environment where engagement, motivation, high performance, constructive behaviors, living the values, all of those things can actually happen. Your job as a leader is to create the environment where the culture can flourish. This is, I think, one of the key components of the messaging around culture that we get wrong so, so very often. That as a leader, when we focus too much on the behaviors of somebody else, or the attitudes of somebody else, or the happiness of somebody else, then we actually lose sight of the job that we are there to do. And actually the job that we are there to do is to lead a group of people, to lead a um, package of work or a function, and to get outcomes for the organization to deliver what the promise is to their customer. That is our job as a leader. Your job as a leader is not to make an individual person happy. That's not your job. Their job is to be able to um, find the happiness, find satisfaction, find engagement, find motivation in the work that they're doing and the people that they're working with and all those sort of things. Absolutely, because they are, they are a human being and that's how we, we do, how we do these things. But it's not your job to do that. It is, however, your job to set up an environment whereby that can actually happen, where that person can seek motivation, can seek satisfaction, can seek happiness, can give their best and, and deliver their highest of performance. It's your job to make sure the barriers that are currently in the way to those things, those happiness and, and motivation things, those feeling things, it's your job to make sure that whatever's standing in the way, you do something to move it out of the way. That's your job as a leader. So if you think very strongly about the role of a leader 
it is about a balancing act of looking at a holistic process and practice. Now you can be extraordinarily compassionate and thoughtful and um, engaging and all those sort of things, inspiring to one person, which is fantastic because that actually does, you know, we're a relationship creature. So having a relationship with the people that you work with on a one-on-one -on -one basis is actually a very pleasurable thing. That's not your primary role though. Your primary role is to get results for the organization. The best way you can get results for the organization is making sure that you set up an environment where the people that report through to you or are influenced by you are not impeded in any way and they can just get on with their job. This is the role of a leader to get out of the way. This is not a position of power and status. This is not a position of taking control of a situation because you feel like you can do it better. If you are doing that as a leader, then you're not actually doing the job of a leader, you're doing the job of a senior specialist and your organization's probably paying you more than they should and they're probably giving you more power and more authority than they should. So be a leader, don't be a senior practitioner. Get out, out there, have a look at the environment that you've currently set up and make sure that that environment enables people to do their best work. The barriers that you may find in place are things like the systems aren't uh, facilitating good outcomes, they might be clunky to use, um, they might be off-putting, they might be old-fashioned, um, they might be not functional for what you're actually trying to deliver. There may be too many workarounds in these systems. There could be policies in place that are barriers to people being able to give their best every day. So policies such as um, decision making in particular, or your decision making policies, so how many people a person has to ask before they're allowed to make a decision on something, how many papers they have to write to make a decision on something, how many people they have to consult and engage with to make a decision on something. These are barriers for people being able to deliver their best work and the customer getting their best result. Other barriers may be the way in which you are leading, the way in which you are managing. So a lot of the time I find that managers mix up accountability with micromanagement and they feel like they have to be on every single detail to make sure that they're holding their people accountable. Accountability is about the outcome. Am I holding them accountable for the outcome? You don't hold people accountable for details. You allow them to uh, put their best foot forward to source information to utilize their experience to do the job that they're paid for to get the result if the result doesn't happen that's what you're holding them accountable for and accountability has a big section of learning in it so if the result doesn't happen what your job as a leader is to hold somebody accountable is to help them figure out why it didn't happen. It's not to go and do the job for them. It's not to force them to do the job. It's not to do any of those things. It's actually to figure out why the result didn't happen. Because if the result didn't happen, there are clearly barriers in the way. Now those barriers might be environmental, which you can handle and you can deal with and you can manage and you can take down some of those big walls that they have to jump over. The barriers could also be within the individual and they could be capability barriers, they could be um, give a shit barriers, they could be uh, engagement barriers, they could be a person that has uh, signed off already with your organization and you may need to do a lot of work to bring them back on board. So there are barriers in place to getting the result. If the result continues to not happen, 
then it's time for that person to find somewhere else to be so that they can flourish because clearly they're not the right person to deliver the result that you're trying to get. One of the other barriers that you do want to check in on first before making a decision that somebody's not right for the job is have you, um, have you created a Have you set realistic expectations for that person and for your business? So if you're um, disappointed because a result hasn't occurred within a one week period of time and yet in reality the job that you've asked them to do is a two week job, then you're actually setting your people up for failure. So you're unable to hold them accountable for something that is not realistic. So these are the sort of things you need to check in on is, is are my expectations actually realistic? Can the result be delivered in the time frame that I've allocated and with the resources that have been allocated, with the capabilities of the person that it's been allocated to? Are there barriers in the way that I need to remove as the leader to enable this work to actually happen? And am I holding people accountable for the result or am I getting into and uh, too much into the detail of the program of work? Because as soon as you start dropping into the detail of the program of work, you're no longer holding them accountable. You're actually allowing them to not perform. If you wanna do the job yourself, just do the job yourself. Don't give it to somebody else and then micromanage them because that is gonna end in failure for you and them. So this has been a very long video on just different thoughts and some of these thoughts are good for my presentation and others are gonna be good for my holding people accountable workshop.